I am going to show you the basics of ASP.NET Core MVC using .NET 9. We will see how to work with the models, the controllers and the views and how they interact with each other all in this short video. If you are new to MVC, this is the perfect starting point. Welcome to Code the Future, this is Island, and I help you learn C Sharp and .NET on your own. Now let's get started. I'm just gonna go to the models folder and create a new model or basically a new class for the models. I'll name it, let's say, item.cs. We'll see that a simple class will be created. Now, this class represents the data of our application. If we had were to store this, which we'll do later on in a database, this class that's stored in the models folder will represent a table in our database. And each property that this class will take will represent the different columns that the table will contain. So we can give to this class different properties. Let's say, let me just give it an ID property firstly, and I'll explain everything. So basically we're setting an access modifier to public for this property so that it can be accessed outside the class. The ID, we name the property here and it will be an integer, this is the type of data. And here we have a getter and a setter that allows this property to be accessed outside of our class. So this is an auto-implemented property. This is just some C-sharp theory here. We can specify here different properties for our model. And we give each item an ID. We can give also each item a name. I'll set it to be public string, the name will have the data type of string, I'll name it name, and the getter and setter as well. Now let's say we want to access this item in a specific URL pattern, let's say that it would be slash items slash let's say overview. So we'll create this application so that when a user makes a request to this URL, it will be redirected to a page that gives him the item. For this reason, what we're going to need is we're going to need a controller named items and also an action in that controller named overview. Let me just go to the controllers folder and add a new controller. I select an empty template here. Click on add. I'll name the controller to be items controller. And we'll see a simple class here, an items controller, the items controller class, which inherits from a base controller class. Basically, every controller will inherit this base controller class because it inherits multiple methods, but you do not need to worry about this for now. We can see, as we talked before, each method in a controller is called action in ASP.NET Core MVC. And here we see this index method or this index action here. This is a public method. It returns an I action result and it's named index. I'm going to clarify to you in the next section what I action result means in more detail. But basically, just this just allows our method to return different types of things. In this case, we are returning a view, which is actually included in this I action result return type. But as I said, we'll talk about the action parameters and action result types in the next section. For now, what we'll do is that I'm going to actually change the name of this action to be overview. Since we're, we're going to need, we wanted the user to be redirected to this specific route. And I'm going to take an instance. I'm going to create an instance of the model that we just created here inside this action. Taking a variable, naming it item equals to new item. And I'm going to need to import the model on top of the controller so that the controller knows the model basically that we created before. So I'm going to need to use this using directive, the name of the application that models here. And as you can see, this is this item. This item keyword is now in green because the page knows, recognizes what it means. And let me just create one item here. It's not necessary for me to give an ID to the model because the program will give it itself. So I'm just going to specify for the item the name property. 
and let's give a name to a random item, let's say keyboard. And that's it. So I have created an item here and I'm going to pass it actually to the view so that we can be able to render this item that I created here inside the view that we'll basically need to create. What this action here does is that it creates the item, it renders the view, but we're going to need to create the view because we don't have a view named overview yet. Just as a reminder, if you want to learn more about C Sharp before starting to build web applications, you can get my C Sharp ebook at a limited time price by using the link in the description. You will find everything you need to know about C Sharp in one place. Just take a look at it and now let's get back to our video. You can just go to the views folder. We're gonna need to actually create a folder to store all of the views inside the items controller. For this reason, I'm gonna name it items. And inside this items folder, we can store views for each action in this controller. And for our case, I'm creating an empty view and I'm naming it according to the name of the action, which was overview. And here we have our overview CS HTML page. Here we can write the plain code, plain HTML code that will be rendered to the user, but we can also embed here C sharp code, which we'll see in a bit what we want to store in this page. I'm actually writing a HTML paragraph here and I'm going to display to the user. This is the name of the item. And for me to actually access this item model that we created inside our controller here that we put as a parameter in the view, I'm going to need to I'm going to need to import the specific model on top of our view page. I'll do it by just writing this at sign model and then the exact address of the model that we created, which is the name of the application that models that the name of the model item. And now I can access the item that we gave into the view by just writing this at sign the add sign will use a lot. This is how we basically write C sharp code inside our view pages. And for me to access the model, I need this model keyword and add model. And here I can access the ID or the name of our model. I'm going to access the name here in this case. And now if we run the project, let's see what we have written now. Now, this is our home controller, the index page, the default route of our application. So this is what we'll see here. But if we go to slash items slash overview, we will be redirected to the items controller, to the overview action, which will actually render our overview view page. Let me just hit enter and we should see here. This is the name of the item and then the name of the item which we specified by using this C sharp code in our view page. So this is just the basics. It may seem a bit complex right now, but you have worked with models, controllers and views all in this short video. You can click the video or the playlist on the screen if you want to learn how to build MVC web applications in ASP.NET Core. So click on the screen and I will see you in the next video.